good at this. I'm good. <laughs> the dumbest thing I ever did was stop reading his phone. When he turned 14 and he had a girlfriend and his conversations were, you know, 14 and stuff, I thought the best thing I could do is respect his privacy. I'm gonna stop going through his phone so he'll trust me. That child deleted everything, you know, growing up. He did not delete a single message from like February 10th until February 18th when he died. I think he wanted me to find it. You know, I think part of him thought maybe I still looked and if his friends weren't telling me, like maybe I'd find it. I stopped looking. 911, what is the address of your emergency? My son is dead. There's been cases where somebody becomes very uh, reclusive and quiet. There's been other times where the person right before committing suicide was on an airplane and, and flying back from Jamaica and had the time of their life. We had tons of plans. I was going to take him to Portland, where the food mecca of the world, the best food I've ever had. Texas friends go, guys, I'm going to Whitey Burger with my mom, and we're going to go to Portland. We're going to eat everything. And he's like super excited. I mean, we have plans. He's going to go snowboarding with his dad that weekend. He's a phenomenal snowboarder. He's going to go, they're going to go to some mountain. They're going to go snowboarding. They have plans. Like we have future plans. While we're sitting on the stairs and he's sitting there talking to us about all this stuff, you know, the work and whatever had happened, You'd see him like kind of look at his phone, which teenagers do. She's tormenting him. What's worse is that he would reply, I'm done. I just want out. I don't even want to live anymore. The only person who'd know I was gone is my mom. And then he sits up and goes, oh my gosh, dad, that's so funny. How, do, how was I supposed to know? It doesn't have a distinct face. We can look at some of the symptomology um, a lot of times it's in retrospect. In hindsight, we go, oh man, that makes sense now, but I didn't really catch on to it. Especially, you know, hormonal teenagers um, can be kind of up and down. But what you're looking for is that inconsistency with mood, um, affect, blank face, uh, stare, things like that. You're looking for withdrawal, you know, a, a lack of interest in things. Um, a lack of appetite could be another one. I mean, there's just a whole uh, gamut of different, but you're looking for inconsistent behavior. When he disclosed, I never, you know, I hate, I, people will say, what's wrong, why? Nothing, I just woke up like this. And when you say, what's wrong, then you make that person feel worse, like more broken because they can't, they don't have an answer, right? They're like, they're like frantically searching to give you things because people want to fix Things. It's more about, you know, what was the intent of their heart when they reached out to me and, and were they genuinely, genuinely concerned? Because I, I can say, hey, what's wrong with you? Or I can say, you know, I've noticed that you're uh, a little acting a little different. I'm really worried about you. I want to make sure I don't know. I don't even know if you want to talk about it, but I'm wondering if you'll just let me sit through it with you. Maybe if you want to talk, I want you to know I'm here. There's an intent there to really be with that person. And it's really the connectiveness that, that matters most. I never said what's wrong or why, or you have everything, what do you have to be sad about? I said, how can I help? And it's okay, like, I, buddy, I love you, it's okay. So when my dad died, it was taboo. We didn't talk about it, you know, especially men. Men didn't commit suicide, people. Like, they, like some people in my family actually said he had a heart attack and stuff. I think it's a generational thing, absolutely. Um, my generation, uh, I don't talk about those things, I mean, you just don't, but I've had to talk to my son about, you know, those types of situations and to help them work through their problems. I am so tired of men looking weak because they're struggling. Why? They have emotions too. You come to some understandings when you speak about it, when you speak out loud. It's different than keeping it inside of your head and constantly, you know, uh, processing it there. And so in kind of reliving and seeing the visuals and, and, and all of those different things, it's different when you're actually talking to somebody and verbalizing, it's almost like reading out loud. You kind of retain more, you understand more. The day he disclosed, I ran upstairs, I grabbed him, I cried. I was like, I just, I love you, you know? And then I told him, look, I've suffered my whole life. And I didn't tell you because I didn't want to put it in your head. A lot of times people think if I ask that, I might put the thought in their head that you know, and, and might be the one thing that pushes them over the edge. There's absolutely no evidence and there's actually evidence against that. And so 
have that conversation, bring up that hard topic. It's hard, it's a hard topic to bring up, but it needs to be talked about. And the best way to address it is, is head on, talk about it, bring it up. Are you suicidal? In his journal, he wrote three entries. Uh, one was, my mom took away my PlayStation today and I'm pissed. And then another one was, my mom took away my PlayStation today and I'm pissed. And then the last one today said, today is the best day of my life because I'm found out I'm not the only one that suffers from depression and it's okay. Because the person that he knew suffered with him was me. Brandon was afraid to tell people that he was depressed because he didn't want to lose his friends. He didn't want to look weak. He didn't want to look wrong or like a problem until I disclosed and then he told everyone. <laughs> this generation thinks a lot differently than ours. So by me saying, you know, how I feel about what they're doing, it's completely different about how they view that same thing. And so it's, it's better to listen and guide, but not necessarily tell them how to, to deal with it. And what people need to really stop saying is why. It doesn't matter why, it doesn't matter why. Even if it's because my girlfriend broke up with me, even if it's because I woke up this way and the chemicals in my brain today are saying, you're sad and I, I can't control it. It doesn't matter. All we need to say is like, how can I help you today? What can I do?